Hello everyone. Today in this video lesson, we would like to apply the Gauss law. Before applying the Gauss law, let us remind ourselves what is the Gauss law is, which tells you that the total flux in any closed surface, which is nothing but the line integral of electric field intensity and the surface area that it is covering, is nothing but equal to 1 by epsilon naught times of the total charge covered in that closed surface. Using this Gauss law, we would like to now calculate electric field intensity due to a charged wire. What is the charged wire that we are taking is a wire like this for example. This is positively charged wire, but this wire is having an infinite length, there is no end to this length, it is there for a very long uh, distance, infinite wire, it is all charged positively. Due to this, at a particular point, I would like to calculate, we would like to calculate electric field intensity. Say this is the point where we would like to calculate electric field intensity, who is at a distance r. So, if I have to apply Gauss law and get the value of electric field intensity, first of all I shall imagine a symmetrical Gaussian surface. Why shall I imagine a symmetrical Gaussian surface? Simply because calculating its area becomes easy if you consider a symmetrical Gaussian surface. So, let us consider a symmetrical Gaussian surface around that point P, so that we can try looking for a applying a Gauss law. So, what kind of a Gaussian surface? It has to cover that point. Let us imagine a symmetrical cylindrical Gaussian surface whose shape is something like this, both the sides and it is covering that point P. As we have a closed Gaussian surface, now I can safely apply a Gauss law and try to understand how can we study it. So, there are different points of a cylinder like a circular part curved, this is a circular part of the cylinder this is the curved part of the cylinder. We shall see how can we apply Gauss law. Let us consider at any of the point because the charge is a positive charge, any point wherever you take the electric field is always radially outward, wherever you take electric field is always radially outward, even on the other side also wherever you take electric field is always in a radially outward direction. Suppose you are talking about a, a small surface area on the circular face of a cylinder. You know the radial uh, area, surface area is an aerial vector whose direction is also radially in an outward direction. So, you can notice at the circular faces of the cylinder who is having a say height h, that the cylinder is having some height obviously h this E and D s are perpendicular to each other, even in the lower uh, circular surface, if I consider a small surface area, its direction is radially outward and these two are perpendicular to each other. So, we can say at circular faces of the cylinder, at circular faces of the cylinder, flux is nothing but equal to E D S cos 90 because they are perpendicular to each other. So, the flux becomes 0. So, there is nothing to apply Gauss law at the circular faces, but let us consider the other faces like a curved faces of that cylinder. Curved faces means this face is what we are talking. If I consider surface area something like this at this curved surface we know the surface area is also radially outward direction, electric field is also in a radially outward direction, even if I consider a surface area here that is also radially in outward direction, electric field is also in a radially outward direction. So, I can say at circular faces the flux is 0, but at curved faces of the cylinder, at curved faces of the cylinder, the angle the value of that phi is equal to line integral of E d s 
cos 0 that's nothing but equal to a d s it's not zero there is some value and now we can look forward to apply the gas law so what i can say as per the gas law as per the gas law i know that we know that we have defined electric flux as a total charge by epsilon naught but this is an infinite sheet i don't know what is the total charge is so how can i write a total charge is by using a term called linear charge density simply defined as linear charge density as charge per unit length so our cylinder is having a length h so the total charge on the cylinder is that what we have a gaussian, gaussian surface if we have defined charge per unit length multiplied by the length of the cylinder in a way we can define charge per unit length as lambda called as linear charge density so i can write the total charge as something like a lambda into h now let us apply this to gauss law and try to further simplify flux is equal to eds is equal to charge by epsilon naught line integral of e d s is the total charge is nothing but charge per unit length that is linear charge density multiplied by h and by epsilon naught e i have to calculate the surface area of the cylinder we know surface area of the cylinder is nothing but equal to 2 pi r that is the circumference of the circle circular part and the height of the cylinder simply like length and breadth equal to lambda h by epsilon naught we can cancel this uh, h and h and we can say electric field intensity is nothing but uh, lambda by 2 pi epsilon naught and uh, r so we are simply able to identify electric field intensity due to a infinitely long charged conductor at a particular point taking the charge that is there available into the area that we are taking into consideration using a term called linear charge density that's called something like a charge per unit length thank you for tuning in we'll continue and we'll be writing further lessons we'll be explaining further video lessons see you back thank you